Tundu has dropped out of sight. I don't know what's going on here. The zookeepers make an emergency stop. Tell him to the last 15 minutes. Botany, a 50,000 ton container ship is about to dock. And the 25 year trucking veteran will be there to meet it. Ready for the biggest challenge of his career. We've done a lot of homework on this, a few little butterflies. We're just hoping everything comes together. For his customer, Rob Clifford, a nervous wait is almost over. Blowing the crane down now, at some point in the next 10 minutes, you'll just see it being lifted straight out of the belly of the ship over, over the top there. Mick's oversized load appears. A 15-month-old Rothschild giraffe called Matundu. Three days ago, he left New Zealand and Auckland Zoo. One of only 1,600 left on the planet. It's up to zookeeper Rob to ensure Matundu makes it on to the next leg of his journey. This is special. If it goes wrong, you just can't go get another one. And so he, he's highly precious. He's very important to the breeding program. One of the biggest dangers is stress, which can kill these sensitive animals. No one knows how this first-time traveller will cope. From Port Botany, Matundu will travel 300 kilometres through the night to his new home at Mogo Zoo. Is he going to strap it all down there? Yeah, yeah. And the first leg of his Australian adventure is a risky 20-metre drop straight down. Mate, um, is this animal going to be spooked? When you're dropping your chains down the side, just don't bang and crash. Yeah, no, I'm going to try very much for that not to happen. But first, this fragile animal must be gently loaded onto the truck. Keeper Rob is still worried about his new arrival. If it's open, leave it open. Yeah, leave it open, then they poke their heads out. If they can see what's going on, they don't freak out yeah. too bad. But he's just frustrated. Who are these people? Things moving over his head. We just need to get on the road. I'd, I'd say uh, the giraffe would have got scared because it scared all of us. Convoy sets off with four support vehicles, including power company workers and a team of zookeepers. My main objective now is to get him to his new home as quick as possible. We're just hoping not to have any more rain, that's all. We're going to lose a bit of visibility and we need to be able to see up on top of that crate at least to get under these low bridges. is just outside the port. We're approaching it now. He has just 30 millimetres of clearance, and only if he picks the right line. The dead centre of the bridge. You're going to be very tight. Through. Happy days. But around the next corner, another even tighter squeeze. Down the end of this, there's some power lines these guys have got to check. Yeah, mate, yep, okay. It looks a bit low. Mate, I reckon we're going to hit this one. 
I've got a feeling this is going to be a problem. That's freaking low. Far out. Mick's passenger is also checking out the power lines. And then Matundu does the unthinkable. He takes a bite. Snacking on a power line could be fatal. Zookeeper Rob is on the scene fast. You right, mate? He grabbed, he grabbed hold of the telephone line. A lucky escape. Just a telephone line. He just bit a hole in it. Matunda, which means the mischievous one, is living up to his name. Got a real fright. Thank God it wasn't a uh, power line or it could have been all over. It doesn't take much and we've got problems. We're not out of the woods yet, obviously. An hour in and the giraffe convoy is almost out of the concrete jungle. We're just on the outskirts of Sydney now, which is good because um, it's going to get a little easier from here. We just try not to jerk the truck around and make the rest of his trip a bit more comfortable. But as they hit the open road, the weather closes in. Visibility is down to probably 50 metres or less. We have to slow down in the fog, it's just no option. Because I need to keep an eye on that crate, make sure everything's uh, intact. Rather than risk the conditions, it's time for a break. So uh, we're just going to pull in here and have a bit of a spell. Go and have a look at our patient. Hey, dude. Hey, mate. Seems pretty happy, doesn't he? A few hours later, the fog lifts. Along with Mick's mood. I'm feeling a lot more relaxed this morning. It's been an eventful trip. And uh, we're not finished just yet, because we're only just over halfway. Outside the town of Berry, power company workers arrive to clear the path ahead. I'm concerned about the time we're getting held up a bit. The permit for this job only allows Mick to drive until 8 a.m. After that, he could be grounded for the rest of the day. Not good for Matundu's stress levels. Really only got an hour and ten minutes to get off the road. So I'm thinking at the moment we're going to blow out because I didn't need this at all. Yeah, not good. And Matundu's losing his patience too. Our mate's moving around in the back at the moment. I can feel the truck moving. I think he's getting anxious too. With the wires finally cleared, Mick's desperate to make the 8am deadline. All right, Pop, we'll see if we can make up a bit of time, mate. We've got to keep pushing on, bud. Yep, yep. But this fragile load needs a smooth ride. These windy roads are slowing us up again. We're trying to make up some time, but we're not doing that well. I don't want to turn too sharp or anything to upset um, our passenger. So it's just, it, it is what it is. I'm hoping we don't get nailed. There it is, that's eight o'clock. Time's up but taking an exhausted giraffe off the road for 24 hours while Mick tries to get another permit isn't an option. We're 
officially running hot. He needs to buy some time from the traffic police. Angus Mick, mate. There you go. We're going to be, I don't know, maybe half an hour late or something. I'll uh, stop the end of the traffic, mate, so you get a, a run through. Okay, thank you very much, mate. Bye-bye, yeah, well, Angus. That's for a good cause. A little bit of leniency. Who's going to pull over a giraffe? But three days at sea and five hours on the road have taken their toll. Matundu has dropped out of sight. I don't know what's going on here. The zookeepers make an emergency stop. It's had it for the last 15 minutes. Right. He's just sitting down, but he's knackered like he is. is he? Yeah. Uh, Exhausted, but OK. For the time being. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all good. He's been really sleepy, and then he just went down. He's sort of bobbing, but we'll just get there now. He's, he's exhausted. Matundu may be tired, but lying down for too long is dangerous. It can send too much blood to the brain causing a giraffe to faint and choke. Hopefully he's going to stick it out to the end of the journey. Well, I think everyone's going to be happy to, to uh, close this job off, I think. Including myself. Up ahead, a narrow bridge, which could mean more delays. We should see quite a few people on Bacon's Bay Bridge. They're in luck. Police have stopped traffic. All good, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you. After six hours on the road, a welcome sight. We've made it. We've made it. It, it's almost over. But has Matundu made it? It's been an exhausting two and a half thousand kilometre journey, but finally. steps on Australian soil. Home sweet home. He's up now, he's all right. For Mick, the biggest challenge of his career was worth it. You're a champion. Thank Not you very much, Eddie. Absolute pleasure.